On today's episode of the Cryptoverse, I would like to do a pro Ethereum episode today. Everybody knows that I'm kind of a bias towards EOS, so I have to make this conscious effort to focus on the rivals and how they are developing. So that's not only important in terms of my responsibility to you, but it also means that as a crypto investor myself, a bias potentially introduces a danger to my portfolio. Because if I'm biased, then I'm not paying attention to the whole picture and the whole picture might be telling me certain things that cause me to adjust my portfolio. So I'd be a fool to let my bias influence my investing decisions. So we all know that Ethereum is the king of smart contract platforms. It's the number one decentralized application platform in the world. It has the most adoption without a doubt. However, it does need to scale up quite significantly. Um, before its competitors catch up in terms of adoption. So that's what Ethereum has got going for it. It's definitely got the most adoption. And yes, some of its competitors have greater performance, but that gives Ethereum time to scale up its performance um, before its competitors catch up in adoption. Now, Raiden or Raiden, whichever way you want to pronounce it, is a second layer solution. It's kind of akin to the Lightning Network, which is um, a second layer solution being built on Bitcoin and Litecoin. So Raiden is this Ethereum second layer solution, and it's now been deployed on the mainnet after being run on the testnet for two years. The proof of concept for Raiden launched a couple of years ago, and it's been run on the testnet since then with various iterations of various tweaks. And uh, this has the promise of scaling to close to a million transactions a second on the Raiden network. So that's what we're going to talk about today. If you are new around here and uh, you would like to get rid of the ads, uh, provide some financial support to the show and earn cryptocurrency rewards daily, then please visit the website thecryptoverse.show. If you click on that big blue button at the top right hand corner there, it says get paid to watch. Uh, that will show you a little two minute video that will explain how you can become a patron to support the show financially which will get rid of the ads and earn you cryptocurrency rewards for being a supporter. Until then, let's get into the show. So these second layer solutions then, like Lightning Network on Bitcoin and Litecoin and Raiden on uh, Ethereum, they are what are technically known as um, state channel networks, and they make transactions without actually making entries into the public blockchain, which reduces the burden on the public blockchain. Now, my metaphor for these state channel networks, if you've not heard it before, is the abacus. <laughs> so basically, if we had an abacus and you and I sat on either ends of the abacus, the beads would represent ether, right? It would represent ether we have locked up in the state channel. Now, I'm showing a picture of an abacus on the screen for you podcast listeners. An abacus obviously have several rows with several rows of beads on it. And each row would represent you know, a channel that's been established between two parties, one at each end. And the number of beads on the on, in the channel would represent the amount of ether that has been locked up in that channel. So let's just take this blue one at the top. If I pay you, I would slide one or more of these beads from my end to your end. And then when you pay me, you would slide a few beads you know, one or more back to me. Now this can go on pretty much forever since uh, the transactions are just between you and I. It's just kind of a private record of uh, who owns how much of that ether that's in the channel, right? You could end up owning it all, I could end up owning it all at some point, but that would adjust based on how we do business in between each other and trade back and forth. Say for example, if all the beads end up on your end, then I'm stuck. I can't now send any more. Right? I would have to either deposit more funds into the channel, put more beads on my end and bring that in externally. Um, and if I don't do that, I can't continue to send to you. Right? I've run out of a balance on my end of the channel. You own all of the balance in the channel. But these second layer solutions, they go further than that by creating like a daisy chain of abakai, meaning um, you can not imagine two abakai connected back to back, right? So I now own, you know, I'm, I've got a channel with this person on my right, and then I've got 
another channel with someone else on my left, but they're all one-to-one -one relationships. So the Raiden network, say, is this big daisy chain of Abakai, meaning once the beads are on my end of the abacus, right, I could pop one of them off and then pop them onto another abacus, abacus that I have with someone else and then slide it over to them, right? So it's not just restricted to a single abacus or a single channel because you are the connector in between, you know, all the channels you have established one-to-one -one with other individuals. So this is how I would deal with the situation where all the beads in the channel uh, that I have with you, our channel, if all the beads end up on your end. At that point, I could either add funds to the channel in the way I just described, or I could wait until one of my other channels, uh, I receive money, right? On any other of my channels, if I receive money, I then have you know, some money to, to send to you. So I act as a relay in that regard, right? So then I can pay you because I got money from somewhere else without having to deposit more funds in our channel. Now, at any time, you can close a channel I basically take all the beads off the abacus and I put them in your pocket and go and spend them anywhere that accepts them. So that's like settling the tab. Whoever owns however much of the funds in the channel, that's the point where you settle and take them into your own Ethereum wallets. So closing that channel formally updates the wallet balance on the public blockchain in a single transaction. What's interesting is you may have done a million transactions um, inside the channel since it was opened without putting any load or any burden on the main Ethereum network. It doesn't bloat the blockchain. It doesn't cause any burden on the blockchain at all. It's just one Ethereum transaction to open the channel, one Ethereum transaction to close the channel. You could do a million, billion transactions in between then inside the channel privately. It's just exchanging of digital signatures, right? And if you can do that, as fast as you can do that is as fast as you can transact, okay? You don't have to wait for consensus, that's the thing. So these types of second layer solutions then, they're just big networks of one-to-one -one partnerships. It's a relay system. So each of which operates its own private you know, partnership in a one-to-one -one basis without any burden on the public blockchain. So this is why fees can be microscopic because you don't have to pay miners, they're not involved in this process. Not, they're only involved when the channel opens because that's an on-chain transaction and when it's closed, on-chain transaction. So you need to come to consensus about that, right? saying, yes, we're putting this money into the state channel and then we're taking this money out of the state channel. Everyone needs consensus on that. But in the meantime, it's just between you and me, right? So this speeds up the network by orders of magnitude. I mean, many, many orders of magnitude uh, compared to transacting on-chain. And it's not necessary, right? It's not necessary. So Raiden, I mean, I, I call it Raiden because I'm a Mortal Kombat fan from the 80s. So Raiden reminds me of that character, you know, the he was like the god of lightning or whatever. Raiden is one of these second layer solutions that works in the way I just described. And it is now live on the Ethereum mainnet, right? It's not in testnet anymore. It's now on the mainnet out in the wild. But it has been released in alpha stage, which means you are limited to creating channels with a maximum balance of 0 0.15 Ether, okay? And uh, this is just in case there's a security issue found. You don't want you know, thousands of ether blowing up in a channel, right? So you want to limit that risk because because it's not it's not production ready yet. It's just an alpha, right? It's uh, it's on the main net, yes, in the wild, but it's for testing purposes still. From what I've read, they've also implemented this kill switch, um, which allows them to they could flip it at any moment and actually force all the channels to close uh, in the event of a major security issue being discovered, right? They could just go, oh my god, there's a problem flip the kill switch and it would just close all the channels on the network, right? And closing all the channels, that just simply means it would force all the channels to settle on the public blockchain. So no one's going to lose any money, right? It just means that whatever the state of the channel is, everyone takes the money out and it goes into their mainnet wallet. So that I'd like that. That's a good solution in my view. Now, I would say the most significant difference uh, between like the Raiden network, I've said it, Raiden, Raiden network and the Lightning network the main difference between Raiden and Lightning is that Raiden, it's on Ethereum, which means we can use Raiden to, um, to create state channels and transact not just with Ether, but with ERC20 tokens. Lightning is just for Bitcoin and Litecoin, right, on their respective networks. It's just one token. Whereas Raiden, 
you can transact in Ether, but you could also transact in ERC20 tokens. You can lock up a bunch of basic attention token in a Raiden channel and transact all day long with it, right? So what it's going to do, it's going to create like private relay networks for specific token economies. And this is, this, that's such a huge difference that it opens up possibilities that I can't actually imagine right now. They're just so huge. So this is why it's really, really bullish for Ethereum. So what's next then is for the very Ethereum developer community to do some real testing with it, right? Out in the wild, in the jungle. With that comes the possibility of rewards, thanks to the associated bug bounty program that uh, the Raiden developers have issued for this. For non-developers, oh, by the way, before I go into that, where I'm getting all this information from, by the way, is um, the official developers medium post. So this was posted on three days ago on uh, the 21st of December. The title of the medium post is Red Eyes Mainnet Release Announced. And it's on the, it's medium.com forward slash uh, Raiden hyphen network. R-A-I-D-E-N hyphen network. So if you just go there, you'll find this, uh, this post and you can follow them if you for, on medium if you want to be notified when uh, they post new updates so so far all this stuff is kind of interesting right and you can't really take action on it unless you're a developer for non-developers what you can do right now is you can see a visual representation of the Raiden network which is always nice right if you want to follow its development and its statistics and watch it grow organically as a visual graph so to do that you would go to the the Raiden Explorer which is which lives at Raiden dot, sorry, big bad. It lives at explorer.raiden.network. Now, if you go there, you see this. Right now, as I record this, we have 42 open channels, uh, 34 unique accounts. So that, that tells us that there's some people with more than one channel open, which is good. Let's see what we got. Um, other statistics 42 channels open right now. Eight channels have been closed. Oh, sorry, eight channels are closed right now. And 80 channels have been settled. That's interesting. And the total network is is uh, 0.657 Ether. So that's how much is locked up in channels in total. Then the real interesting thing is the network visualization. So the this is the state of all open channels right now. You can flip this thing that says show all channels, which I don't think is particularly helpful. It's, it's interesting, but it shows open, closed, and settled channels, which I don't I don't want to know that. I want to know what's the current state of the network, you know, in reality, what are all the open channels? So here they are. It looks pretty good. It looks like the Lightning Network when it first started. Now, if you visit this every day, I can almost guarantee you the complexity of this is going to increase exponentially. Right? As more and more people join it and more and more people uh, hear about this, hopefully as a result of watching my video here, and they'll uh, get involved in this. So this news actually coincided with Ethereum leading the market yesterday. So let's go take a look at that. The first thing I noticed today, actually, when I look at uh, buy support is there was a big jump in uh, buy support for Ethereum. So Ethereum is now the second most in-demand coin by, uh, by buy orders, demand across all exchanges, followed by EOS. However, um, Ethereum has more than double the demand of EOS. So right now, as I record this, $52 million of buy support is uh, hanging around in Ethereum-based markets, and $20 million is hanging around in buy support for EOS markets. I say that's a coincidence, but uh, it could be it could be completely independent, that demand for Ethereum, but it seems like a bit of a coincidence that this good news about Ethereum comes out, and then tons of buy support comes in. Could be completely unrelated. I'm just saying that it looks like a massive coincidence to me. The charts, of course, give us another perspective. Let's go over to that right now. There we go. So what I've drawn on here is a uh, Ethereum chart on the daily chart. It's giving us a nice rounded bottom, which I've actually drawn as a curve. It lasts it lasts about a month from the middle of November to the middle of um, December. That's the first thing I noticed. We're, we've also we're also now reaching a uh, a zone of like coincidental resistance. So let me zoom right in here. When I say a coincidence, there are two things that we are hitting here. We're hitting this teal colored dotted line that's horizontal at $167. That is actually from back here. It's the previous swing low from the 12th of September. So that is, that's going to ordinarily be resistance just on any day of the week. But in addition to that, 
the red line that I've thickened up for the benefit of the recording is the 80 day moving average, which uh, we've been below for, well, you know, since since mid May. So we've we've been all the action has been below the 80 day moving average since mid May. So crossing above that would be very bullish indeed. So these two prices are roughly the same. They're they're right, they're between 160 and 170 dollars. So that's the area of resistance that we need to clear. And I've put an ellipse there in yellow to demarcate that zone. So this is a key decision point for the market. Um, if we break this resistance, Ethereum is looking very, very good to me. Also, that increasing buy support that we just looked at, um, with that, there's there's a reasonably low probability of Ethereum falling in price because we already know that if the price starts to fall, there's a whole bunch of people ready to buy it up and support the price, which is which is excellent news from a market analysis point of view. If we can clear this zone of resistance, though, that I just pointed out, I would not be surprised if we see Ethereum roughly double in price from like $167 where it is now uh, back to about $300. And, and where I got that price from was this other horizontal line up here at $303. And if I zoom out, you'll see where that came from. That came from the, the previous consolidation zone from back in August, which I've also drawn out as a yellow ellipse. So this is like my next target for Ethereum. If it can clear this zone of resistance at $167, if we can break above that, and then the 80 day moving average provides support, I wouldn't be surprised if we then do roughly double up to about $300. So that's my outlook. And uh, with bullish news like the Raiden network situation, maybe that will pump enough enthusiasm into the space to make that happen. But that is all I've got for you today. So if you like this episode, go ahead, hit the like button. Uh, please leave me a comment below with some feedback. And if you really like this video, I'd appreciate it if you hit the subscribe button. Uh, there's a number of other ways you can uh, get more information from me. If you visit the website, which is uh, cryptoasset.school, there are a number of th different things you can do on there. If you're brand new to cryptocurrency, you can sign up for this three-part video series called How the Crypto Revolution is Bigger Than the Internet. You just put in your name and email and I'll email you the videos automatically. Uh, if you want to learn via structured online courses for one low monthly fee, you can sort of sign up to the um, like the Netflix of crypto education, where I now have seven online courses that you get unlimited access to for one low monthly fee, no contract, cancel any time. And uh, if you want to earn yourself a passive income in Bitcoin for helping me to promote the online school that I just mentioned, check out this uh, affiliate program that pays you roughly 20% commission if you refer someone who signs up as a student. And you'll get that commission in perpetuity for as long as they are a student. So it's a great way to get yourself some Bitcoin uh, and just, you know, <laughs> refer someone, you help them get educated and you'll earn yourself some money at the same time. But that is all I've got for you today. I'll be back with the next episode of the Cryptoverse. So until then, it's me, Chris Coney saying bye for now.